You're watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with dental implants. According to my first guest, he says nobody should be wearing a loose-fitting denture. With us, we have an expert on the topic, Dr. Janice. Dr. Janice, welcome to the program. Well, Randy, thanks for having me. Now, I pronounced your last name right. Is Very well right? done. And your patients call you? Dr. J. Dr. J. Keep All it simple. right. Okay, now I know you brought a lot of photos, so we'll, we'll kind of get as many of those in as we can. Sure. Now, for people that don't know your practice, who's the typical patient that comes in for dental implants? So in our office, uh, the typical patient is a patient who's uh, either very unhappy with their current uh, status using dentures, or those who have been told that their teeth are terminally ill, essentially meaning that they have to go to sure. having dentures. All right. And they want to find a way, and they've heard from other patients who wear dentures that they're tired of dealing with either goops or glues to hold them in, can't chew the foods that they're really interested in having. And this is a way for me to give them something that does stay in their mouth and gives them the flexibility to chew the foods that they want. So you believe that, though? Like, no more dentures? Like, nobody should be wearing a loose-fitting denture? Uh, firm believer. Uh, and it actually, it stems from an, an early childhood experience with my grandfather. Uh, my grandpa Harold and me were essentially probably the best friends ever. He used to call me his buddy. Well, I learned early that grandpa had a special trick that he could wake up and take his teeth out and put them in a jar. And right. those teeth would stay in that jar till the next morning. But if you asked me what his favorite foods were, essentially I could tell you it had been Vienna sausages, mashed potatoes, eggs, and lastly, any donut that he could find and put in milk but it's coming out to find out the reason why he didn't love those foods. Those are the only foods he could actually eat in the presence of other people. Because again, he didn't have the chewing capability to eat the foods that he wanted. So I'm definitely, a, no, no dentures in my world if I could, if could I have my way. Well, another uh, set of patients that are those who have been through the grind of having, you know, fillings falling out, broken teeth, geez, they can't chew because they actually have tooth pain. These are also a set of patients who are looking for a way to mend all of these chronic issues that really can inhib in inhibit their lifestyle. So a lot of the people that go to you, they feel like they're headed to dentures and they don't want dentures. No, they've, they've, they've heard from others, uh, coworkers or friends or grandparents and even uneducated patients as far as dentistry goes, they very well know that they don't want a lower denture and they are finding ways, any way they possible to avoid them. Okay, now in Vermont, uh, yes. are there a lot of people wearing dentures? We I mean, is it a big problem? It is, Randy. Now, this is something that we really have to battle uh, because up in Vermont, uh, Maine, New England, this New England area itself, it really homes, is home to probably over 600,000 people who are without their own teeth and are deciding to again, accept a lesser lifestyle to, again, use what they have uh, currently through the denture process. So a lot of denture wares. Tons of denture well, wares. Well, if dental implants are so good, why aren't they all doing it? And specifically, like, the denture wares. Sure. Well, generally, it's, it's a process of this natural progression that once you have dentures, this is your chance to stop having to go back and forth to the dentist 50 okay. times all a right. year. Right. So a lot of these patients have really kind of made the choice that once they have their teeth out, they were essentially trying to step away from dentistry. If not, this is the recourse of action of the dentist actually pushing them away so that they didn't have to go back. So therefore, once they don't really even know what their options are, they tend to accept their quality of life Because they don't as go is. to the dentist. They don't go to the dentist. Nope, and it's, it's unfortunate. But until they have some type of external uh, interaction with someone who is knowledgeable and understands, they don't know that they can have something better if not better than what they've ever had naturally. And another reason why these denture wares aren't coming in is because it's been this cycle. You know, it probably started early on as just one filling. Then that filling turned into a bigger filling. Then that filling turned into a crown. Then it was a root canal. Well, then it was a new crown on that root canal and eventually this tooth has been removed and now it's a bridge. So you gotta understand that when they go through these, these chronic cycles, it really can be a point where they're done with the dentist. In the end, they actually are in no better position than they were where they started except for now they're without tons of money because they've been spending time and years to get this stuff done. And they done. lost all their teeth. And they still so lose the all their teeth. the last thing they want to do is go see you. Correct. Do you even hear that? Like, no offense, doctor, but I don't like the dentist. Yeah. Welcome to my life, Randy. Do they uh, really say that? They all say it. They say, geez, no, no offense, doc, but I really hate coming to see you. And they haven't even met. This is like at a free console. They haven't even had a chance to really meet me yet, but yet they still have this kind of predetermined thought that I don't want to see these people. And in fact, it almost takes people usually 12 to 18 months to prepare these things mentally just to even come in for a free consult itself. Because the dental, the dental world they've been living in and the history that they have can truly be a point where they have to get mentally prepared to overcome their own internal fears to actually want to even come and show up for the appointment. And another reason why they don't come in is because now it's very popular to self-diagnose your own issues. 
So therefore, they are saying that, oh, geez, I may even be too old for this. You know, what have I got left to live well, for? Well, how old can you be? You can be any age, Randy. Honestly, we have like a patient. Like what's your oldest patient? Uh, oldest patient is 94 years of age who had gone through the gamut of what can she do? At this point in her life, one of the things she really valued was the social experience with her kids, grandkids. And what do we do when we get together as big families? We eat food. So therefore, if you can't eat food, because honestly, you're probably not 94 trying to climb a mountain somewhere, this is what you look forward to. And she got to the point where she said, you know what? I really want to do the things that my kids are doing and I want to eat what they're eating. Versus always saying, geez, you know, I, I really can't do that today or you know, I don't show up to the, you know, the family reunion because you're terrified of having your teeth slip out. I mean, lower dentures that want to pop out when you're trying to eat foods and all you can eat is like mashed potatoes. These are the things where, again, patients will choose at any age and say, I didn't realize that. I really felt like I was too old until you can explain to them, you take control of your life. We're just giving the options to do so. Now back to that 94 year old woman, she actually came back to me and she had been wearing a, an upper and a lower denture. And in one day we were able to give her a set of teeth that didn't come in and out that allowed her to eat any food. Upper and, and lower. Upper and lower. Any food that she could even look at was something she could put in her mouth and chew and get all the nutrients out of and share those times with her family. And, uh, so it doesn't matter. I mean, if you're like that 90 something years old, they're not more likely to fall out no. statistically. Oh, really? Okay. Nope. At, at any age, again, the dental implants themselves is, is a biological process that we know a lot about. But what's most important is, again, these teeth do not come out and you can eat whatever you can imagine to eat. Do you hear a lot of eating stories? All day long, they're talking about, oh, geez, talk, no, I can eat the, I can eat the mud flaps off a dump truck. You know, honestly, we... Somebody said that to you? Yes, we don't recommend mud flaps. However, it's that confidence to really look at a menu and say, what do I want to eat versus what can I physically and am I able to eat? Those, those days are gone for many of these patients, and they get to say, geez, I'm going to eat an apple today. I'm going to eat corn on the cob. I'm going to eat... I'm Even gonna... with their front teeth? I mean, you could bite a carrot with these? bite right into it, tear it off like Mr. Ed, you get to have access to those foods again, which is really enjoyable. You say things like, this is like a third set of teeth. Sure. Yeah, well, you know, some of these patients have really gone through the first and second, uh, and now this is their, their time to shine with the third. But isn't it true, though, if you've been wearing a denture like 10 or 20 years in a denture, you don't have enough bone to do this? Absolutely not. No, I can, I can think off the top of my head, a patient have been wearing dentures for 25 years. 25 years, not 10 or 20, 25 years, still with enough bone to place these dental implants and then walk out with teeth that are fixed to her that she doesn't have to take in and out and can brush just like natural teeth. So it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And now, you told me we, off camera sure. that a lot of the patients come in and actually tell you, I was told I didn't have enough bone. Yes. Is that true? Like to get dental implants? Sure. Well, that was true for the practitioner in their experience level at that previous office. But again, with new techniques, we have the ability to give patients back and more patients back dental implants that have the teeth that stay on them and don't have to come in and out. But you say by getting your teeth back, for many of these people, it's life-changing. Yes. Really? Yes, this is absolutely life-changing. So let me show you, if I can, show you a picture of one of our patients who has gone through one of these transformations. Okay. Now, there's a time when patients do come to us for specific reasons, and they really want and achieve a specific goal. In this case, we happen to have a, a wonderful gentleman who had been working the same job 30 years, and he's been married. However, he liked to look good for his coworkers. Okay. And this is something that's very important, and his wife was on board with it. However, this is one of the driving forces that pushed him over the edge to finally make a choice to do something for himself to, again, establish his own self-worth at, at at the workplace. So what he had going on at this time is he'd been wearing some type of removable denture. He'd been having teeth that had been slowly breaking over time. And this is something where he said, again, began chronically starting to adjust his physical nature to not smile or cover up himself. Literally, he would laugh and smile and, 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 and his hand would come up or he'd get the newspaper out because he lost the confidence to actually smile and became very comprehensive about it in order to not be able to want to smile for his, his friends and coworkers. For him, there was no way he wanted to have dentures. So you couldn't save those teeth? We couldn't save these okay, teeth. Okay. This is a case where we did have terminal teeth that really needed to be replaced. And this is one of those options. He could have gone with, with dentures, but he knew that he wanted to be able to eat and he wanted to be able to smile confidently, not to mention be able to taste his food is also a side benefit of it. So on the day of procedure, we were able to take out the old teeth, okay? And in doing this, we get out rid of all the old bacterial infections, any of the broken teeth, and we were able to give him back new teeth that literally in the same day was able to start smiling again and a beautiful smile at that. So how, how soon can they eat after the procedure? Randy, we're shooting for the same day. 
We're shooting for the same day. They can start eating foods. Now, one thing you have to remember is the fact that they haven't had teeth to chew with for a long period of time. And so generally we tell them to start with softer and softer foods just to even learn how to chew the food again. So just like they're going to learn how to smile those first couple of weeks and get rid of some of those nuances where, again, they're either covering their, their, their mouth with the newspaper or they're pinning their lips together to be able to smile. This is something that they will learn that will start changing their overall character. You say you see changes in their personality. This is something that definitely comes with it, and I almost could, could make the, the joke that when they get their teeth changed, they either start with a new hair dye job or they shave their mustaches. This is something that comes with the territory because, again, they start to learn who they are again that they've slowly suppressed over the years. So smiling and laughing and... Yes, definitely smiling, things. laughing, and feeling okay to laugh versus they would always kind of reserve and say, oh, I can't get too interested in this conversation because the end result may be laughing and see, someone seeing my imperfect teeth. Now they can let it go. But backing up for a moment, you, you mentioned that you do extractions and then give them their teeth on the same day. Yes. But if they have gum disease, uh, bad gums, can they, they can still do this. They're the perfect patient. This is why we have access to do these type of things because we have complete control over that. When we're doing this process of taking out the old bad teeth, that is our time to clean things up to, to boys better than they've ever been before in order to give them the new set of teeth that stay Okay, in. now we should mention a little bit about your, your bio. I mean, you teach this to dentists across the country. Is that right? In fact, you do a lot of this. I mean, every single day, you're, you're replacing missing teeth with dental implants. Yes, this is something that we are trying to make more well known because of how effective and safe it is for the patients. This is something where, again, we're able to start training these dentists on how to do these procedures, how to see, how to understand some of the stuff that we've kind of accumulated over the years, those who have been involved in the, in, the, in the dental implant business. We're trying to find a way to, again, slowly spoon feed this to them in a way that, again, keeps it safe for them, safe for their patients, and be able to diagnose to help these patients who may be in their practice find better methods to Now, now you to do fix everything themselves. like computerized now, yes. right? I mean, you build the teeth on the computer first before you do the surgery. Yes, yeah, so what we're really f focused on is really, again, the patient is the one who's driving this new and improved educational process because we want to be able to cut down the amount of time that patients have to be exposed to surgical procedures themselves. So we are, we're teaching a way that we can literally spend half of our time doing computer-generated surgeries so we don't have to do the exploration on our patients. This would almost be like when they used to do a lot more open heart surgeries for your cardiac patients. Well, now we're doing things more laparoscopically in that medical field, we wanted to do the same thing on our end. We wanted to cut out the amount of time that the patient has to be in the chair, and we want to do it even more predictably and more accurately. Now, I don't even know what you were talking about in the green room, but you were showing me photos, and you said, well, what used to take me four hours, I could do in eight minutes. Yes. Is that right? That is the unbelievable truth of where we are in the dental world. And this may be one of the best times to have dental implant surgery done because we have access to so much technology that literally we're cutting out almost 75% of the clinical surgical time by using these advanced techniques. Uh, you know, another thing, I, I guess the way you do it is a little bit different. I guess how it's normally done across the country when you get dental implants is you go to one doctor that does the surgery, another doctor that puts the tooth on top, maybe somewhere else for the imaging. You, you do it all right there. Is that right? In that is center? correct. Yep. And Aside from convenience though, sure. what's the benefit? Convenience actually might be one of the most important things, Randy, because honestly, when you have the referral system process, which is what you're speaking of, man, you have one person who then sends you to another, to another, to another, to another. The amount of breakdown between communication and the fact that patients end up not going because they've established a reputation with the main guy. They okay. want to see their own dentist and they don't want to have to learn and start building a new relationship with other practitioners. And then now you've got multiple different stops in order to get this involved into their lives. This isn't a simple stop, you know, come in and just have your teeth cleaned. So because of our technology, we're able to do it all in one location, Randy. And, and, and in one day? One day. That's not an overstatement. Not an overstatement. We do all the planning beforehand. This is where it takes all the issues out of the patient's schedule. We are able to do all of this planning before they even come in. And so essentially they just show up and we just need their physical body to complete the actions. On okay, it. now people need to know, you know, this is, uh, I'm not trying to side with you sure. all right, or endorse you. I'm just asking the questions here. But one of the things was interesting you said in our green room was how it's normally done is they get a denture, a plastic set of teeth that are normally supported by dental implants at most places that either snap in or snap out. You don't like that kind of teeth. You say you're using these zirconia teeth that don't come in and out. 
Yes. Tell me about that. So one of the issues that we run into, again, doing this long enough to where you start seeing not just the day one results, but the 10-year the results, the 15-year results, we're starting to see a lot of breakdown in the actual material choice that we used. And the other thing you gotta, you gotta feel comfortable with is these patients are looking for a one-time solution. Okay, and I okay. think that is something that's very important because when you invest in this type of procedure into your own health, this is where something I would, I would like to be in a position to give you something that really is kind of a one fixes all type of treatment choice. Now the zirconia that you brought up, this is something again, to every degree, you could even call it unbreakable. I mean, they test this thing with hammers. Okay, okay. so if you work construction, if you're, if you're anywhere, anyhow, these things will withstand what you can do with your teeth. So you don't like the plastic? No. And they're really putting plastic in the mouths in most places with dental implants? Yes. Okay. Unfortunately, that's still part of the part of the process is that there are some, some offices that will use the plastic. But you got to mention, these, these patients are trying to get away from dentures themselves. Okay, they got to take them out at night. They got to rinse them and clean them because they don't want fungal infections in there. But now we have some places who are placing this into their mouths permanently. This requires a lot more actual maintenance because they actually have to come in probably three, four, sometimes five times a year to actually have those teeth that they but just- But not with the way you're doing it. Not the way I'm doing it, no. Nope. So zirconia, and they look real? And they look you more You say they real. look real, because I feel like I could spot them walking down the street. Well, I'll, we'll put you to the test, Randy. We'll okay. give you a couple of photos here. We got this Let's one take a look. photo Let's here. Take a look. I want you to look at this one. This patient was what you talked about. Someone who'd been diagnosed with periodontal disease, I mean, like their teeth got loose and their red gums and they were inflamed and irritated. This patient had, again, the option to have dentures. So with this patient here, Randy, we were unable to save the teeth. So we took the teeth out and we put new teeth in here that look as natural as possible. And look at this upcoming photo. That's very nice. It's gonna show the beautiful smile that this patient has always been wanting. Now you're a dentist. Yes. So you probably think that the teeth are the most important thing, right? As sure. far as your appearance? Sure. Is that true? They've done plenty of studies, Randy. This isn't something that dentists pop out uh, of their pockets. This is something where they've spent the time because our society is so focused on, on first appearances. This is okay. something that has an effect on you know, job interviews. You know, for you, you've got a nice smile, Randy. Thanks. So when people come in, they say, yeah, this person has a nice smile and they really have a nice, they carry themselves well. If you start removing those things, like they do in often most movies, they are taking out a front tooth. They're giving them red bleeding gums in these pictures and photos to represent them as less than someone who is not as intelligent. That is a good point. Like in the movies, if you want to make somebody look poor, you give them bad teeth. Correct. And so once you start changing that dynamic on how people perceive the patient, the patient then starts perceiving themselves differently, and that's when the magic happens. So when we give them the teeth back, this is where their whole life changes, and this starts from their wardrobe, this starts about how they talk, who they talk to, and the fact of even feeling more confident socializing in atmospheres where they would definitely have, have chosen not to, to avoid any embarrassment. All right, so the next woman we have here. All right. Uh, so our next patient here, this is again, someone who's been on that cycle, the chronic cycle of starting with a couple of fillings, then being told that they've had bad home care, they're not brushing, they're not flossing, though they're really making the attempt to do everything they can. And then that point, they've been pushed away by dentistry as a profession itself. Now the good news is, is they're able to come back and get involved because they, could, they understood that there was an option to one, prevent having the need for more cavities being filled or more root canals or more crowns, because they could have something that didn't get cavities. On top of that, it could also look very beautiful. So in this next patient here, again, teeth could not be saved. Okay. We wanted to take them out and we wanted to give her something that she could be proud of, both in her own self-worth and the way that people perceived her. So we went with the, the zirconia teeth that look beautiful. They're able to shine like natural teeth. They don't stain like natural teeth. So these don't come in and out. I mean, this is just full arch of teeth, upper and lower. In permanently. Not okay. having to take out at cleanings, literally put in, brush them like real teeth, and you end up getting to the point where she ends up forgetting that she had teeth that stay in permanently. So this woman had a partial denture that she had to take out at night. And you can even see from this photo that she doesn't even want to smile. She's okay. kind of just doing whatever she can to damage control throughout her daily life. But then what we're able to do is we're able to take these teeth out, same day, again, gum disease and all, clean it up and give her back new teeth they look beautiful. They look real and, on, on the after. And stay in her mouth. So I know if you can spot these denture wearers out there, I, I'd be pressed hard to see if you can't find some of them from our patients. And so also thing I wanna point out is I wanna talk about the teeth themselves. This is something that's really important because we also want to give a youthful, rejuvenated feel to our work. Mm -hmm. However, in addition to that, it still has to be age appropriate. And this is something that we can, we can customize to the degree that she had given us a photo of herself at her high school graduation 
and that's the teeth that she wanted. And she said, can you do that? And the answer is yes. Okay. And you can see in this photo how the, how the teeth follow the lower lip. This is something that we perceive as something that's beautiful with this type of sy symmetry. In addition to that, we're able to match the, match the shapes and the contours of the teeth that she had before she was plagued with some of these dental conditions. And Randy, when you get a chance to see these people look at themselves for the first time, literally, you're welcome to come to my office and see this. This okay. is the part where, again, you got your tissue boxes everywhere because when you unveil this new smile and they look in that mirror, this is essentially the first time they've actually seen themselves and feel like this is the first day of the rest of their life. So they like it. They get they tears. They love it. They get tears. Everybody wants to hug. But I, I have these very expensive loops that I use to perform, and everybody's crushing my stuff. But again, the most important part is these patients get to feel that life again inside of them and get rid of those old dormant feelings. Okay. Now we should mention your wife. You work with your wife. She's a dentist too. We haven't even mentioned that. Yes. Isn't that so? Something? So you work as a team on on some of these yes. cases. Yes. So we're a match made in heaven. The fact that we are able to offer so many services in one location. Okay. For me, again, my my work is dedicated to treating these patients who we're talking about ill-fitting dentures, loose dentures, can't chew, can't eat. That's the stuff that I have, I'm able to dedicate my time to. Another thing that's important to us, Randy, is the follow-up care. Okay, these patients, again, have been out of the loop for so long. My wife and I have the attractive position of that we can offer in one location, not just giving the beautiful teeth, but a way to get them back into be able to following up and keeping their teeth in good shape. So they'll see a hygienist or a cleaning like every six months or so? Back to it, but you know what's different? is they're actually excited to come back because they can't wait for people to see how clean and beautiful their teeth are. And they really take that as good, a self-worth impression. So it's really nice to have that all in one place. Okay, good. We have time for a few more. What right. else are we looking at? So let's do, let's do another one. Okay. Now this one may, oh my uh, goodness. this one may bring out some joy to you because this patient himself uh, had, again, been through the system. Okay. Self-diagnosed. Geez, I've had, you know, gum disease. My gums are too bad. I don't have enough bone. I don't really need to do anything else. I'm just going to let them go. And I'm okay with that. However, we actually met a little bit of a love twist in here, and it was the a significant other that's like, I'd like you to give it another chance. I'd like you to see what's going on because we're going to take wedding pictures. So like his wife says, I need to get your teeth fixed. Yes. Okay. So she's like, and, and this is, this, I hate to say this isn't too uncommon. Wives or significant others are making the, the appointments for their spouses. So we get a lot of these free consults and we encourage both okay. to come in because sometimes, again, there's enough uh, emphasis where, again, the, the wife or the spouse wants them to, to, to seek dental health care. And this is one way we can do it. But what makes it exciting is its connection is that we were able to diagnose, we were able to get rid of the bad teeth, we were able to clean up the gums, and we were able to give him back his first set of smiling teeth that he's had that he could even remember. Because he says he's even lost teeth from his early childhood and his, in high school years. And now he was able to, again, start smiling again. But as we go through these processes, again, this is custom. I mean, I want them to be able to choose the smile that they want, not all what right, I want them right. to give, okay? He brought up a couple of different newscasters that he wanted us to scan their smile shape <laughs> and have his teeth replicated after that. So I, I, I'm not going to tell you who the sports catcher is. Maybe you can do it for us. Okay. However, when you get to look at the smile, you get to see a man... Wow, it doesn't even look like the same guy. Totally changed. So I want you to look at this before and after, Randy, and look at how you would perceive this person. On the before, yeah. On the before compared to where they are in the after. Okay, truly <laughs> exceptional. It is nice. It is really nice. And you say, oh, it's, maybe it's just teeth. And oh, this is just I did. a cosmetic I told you that thing. in the I, room. I said, well, it's just teeth. Can it really be that big of a deal? No, we're proving you wrong. This is a life-changing <laughs> okay. experience that can be completed and can be done safely. So Randy, here's another patient. Very similar story, okay? self-diagnosed, I've got gum disease. However, he was just getting off the ends of a very, very difficult divorce. And he was really down on himself. And he felt that this was the time in his life to actually make a choice for himself to move forward and move on. Yeah. So you can see in here, again, many people may feel that, oh, I'm the only one. I mean, this has got to be unusual though. Unfortunately, the answer is no. This is something I do get to see because I get to see the insides of people, I meaning I get to see their heart conditions. These are the things where, again, people have been kind of these suffering, silent. So this guy did not want dentures? No dentures. All right. Yep. Teeth couldn't be saved. Again, he wanted to be a man and wanted to be whole. He didn't want to have to worry about having someone and meeting someone for the first time, showing and, and eventually telling the secret that he didn't have his own teeth that stayed in. Okay. So he chose, and I want you to look at this after photo here. It looks nice. This man now felt like a man again. This is the power that he was able to now encompass. He bought himself a dog. Okay. He wanted to have more family life. He wanted to be more social. And what was amazing is I get to do the follow-ups for these patients again because we are able to see them after. We don't just let them go. 
literally one year later, he had been on social media, found another dog lover. And this is one of the, one of the sad stories is that we build these professional relationships, so I feel like I know these people. Yeah, yeah. And he came to me and said, you know what, Dr. J, I really appreciate all you've done, but I have to leave. And I said, well, what, you know, for me, it's obviously, did I, did, is everything okay? He's like, it's because I've actually found someone that makes me happy, I feel comfortable around, and it's honestly because I can now smile and be who I am. And therefore, that was, again, the next step in his life. So he moved. And he moved away, off into the sunset, waving okay. goodbye. But again, he, the hugs and the embraces That's were nice. there. It really, it's nice to see that because... I don't want people to feel judged where there is no hope and there's no uh, room for improvement. The idea of hope is the fact that they can move beyond their situation. If there's something that they're really unhappy about, they have the choice now to improve their lives. And it's one of those things that definitely affects their overall health and their overall psyche. We have about a minute left. Final message. Okay. Final message is that all of these patients had the option to choose dentures that came in and out of their mouths or were able to pick something that stayed in the mouths permanently. Again, patients that felt like nobody thought they were given the time of day to talk to them because they looked angry, you get to go from actual depressed look to something that is again now full confidence all the way through. Periodontal disease, decay, cavities, all of these different circumstances that people run into, there is an option that doesn't have to involve dentures and we wanna make it a one-time investment into your own health, into your own life to enjoy it. So no more dentures. No more dentures, get fixed teeth, zirconia, make sure you ask for something that's more than plastic. And you can eat whatever you want. And we should mention, look, you've been doing this, you teach other dentists yeah. how to do, does it cost more to go to a guy that, that teaches dentists how to do this dental implant process? Absolutely not. You also gotta to, to understand that, again, I place more dental implants in a month than most of these guys will probably place in a year, if not a lifetime. Okay. So there's definitely these concepts where, again, for us, in these volumes of dental implants that we do, is we choose implant companies that want to give us the best high-quality products, and they do. They want to help us do that. And the other thing is we do it so efficiently with these high-end techniques as far as doing all the surgery before you come in. We have the ability to cut your chair time, meaning like the amount of time of hours. So maybe less. It generally is likely less, and we want to give you the best material possible using the zirconia teeth, not plastic. I want to thank you for coming on the program. Very interesting. These, these photos are on your website. These photos are on our website, yes, and we're now, now, we have to mention insurance does not cover this. Even the best insurance Correct. covers a small portion. Correct. Medicare does not cover this. Correct. Uh, but you have financing. We have financing. Do people finance these things? They do. In fact, you'll be able to find yourselves in almost a better position than having to buy a new car these days. You can find something that does fit into your life enables you to, to be able to chew and eat efficiently. Okay, good. I want to thanks. Thanks again. Thank good you so much, Randy. You've been watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez for now. I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.